My name is Jesse Rostin, and you are watching The Film Fix. Tell us a little bit about your career. Now, you, um, you're a photographer. Uh, the photography that I do, um, I don't know. I don't know what to say about it. it it's, it's in, a way, I, in a way, I'm, like, I'm trying to, to communicate uh, um, some, some idea or, or emotion in each shot. And in a way, I, I'm also just exploring light and just exploring uh, objects, people. You have some wonderful shots of some people. And, uh, you know, maybe you can uh, give us a few uh, or just talk about one or two. The last, the last one I posted here on my portfolio here is called The CEO. It's a guy in a suit. I've seen that he's one. Got, he's got a cigar. Um, this, is, is this is my friend Jim. Okay. It, it, it's just a friend, you know, uh, he was wanting some some headshots for, for some other project he was working on. And I thought, well, we'll do some headshots, but then, you know, I'm going to bring some props and we'll, we'll have a little bit of fun, a little bit of fun afterwards. So, um, this was shot indoors. Uh, we used a, a neutral gray background and the cigar and the smoke was put in, in post. The cigar was there, the cigar was there, but, uh, uh I, I lit the end in post to make it look like it was burning. Because we, we were inside, we couldn't really burn the cigar and just inside. So people, just so people understand, um, you, you used a piece of software uh, in order to add the, 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 the burn and the smoke. Uh, and what type of software are you using? Uh, well, um, Photoshop for, uh, for the editing. And then I'll use Lightroom just for regular raw processing. And of course Lightroom is an yeah. Adobe product and, uh, and Photoshop is an Adobe product. A uh, lot of people out there that have their, their small cameras that are not capable of shooting in RAW uh, shoot in JPEG. Could you mm -hmm. tell us the difference between RAW and JPEG and why it's important if you have the ability to shoot in RAW, why you'd want to shoot in RAW? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, RAW, well, let's see, how do I, how do I break it down simply? Um, RAW is basically all of the data that's coming right off the sensor before any major compression happens. So you start... The, the camera captures, you know, this, this large amount of light <clears throat> and it, it puts it in this big uncompressed file called a RAW. Um, um, when you shoot into JPEG, the camera takes this big file and it like squeezes it down into this smaller file, which is like a compressed JPEG file. And so in order to go from here to here, uh, you have to throw away information. Now, normally... Uh, uh, you know, the JPEG compression is really efficient at throwing away that information. And you generally, you, you know, uh, you, you generally can't tell that information's missing until you go to start processing. Say you want to change uh, the white balance or you want to um, bring up the black levels or, or try to recover highlights. If, if you've thrown away that additional information w while shooting, uh, because you've been shooting JPEG, you can't get it back. So um, you have the most flexibility when you shoot raw uh, keep the keep the photos in a raw format, and you're able to then control what information goes into that JPEG. Exactly. Yeah, you can say you can you can take this large file and say, well, I want to I want to sort of like shape it. You know, I want to want to bring the blacks up, and I want to bring the highlights down, and maybe the midtones up. And you can even change the color balance with with no loss of quality. Um, so once you've shaped your 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 exposure, then you can say, okay, bake that look in, bake that into a JPEG. And then the you know the JPEG becomes the small deliverable file at that point. With the SD cards and the CF cards price falling, uh, you know, and, and you're getting larger and larger cards, you might as well shoot in RAW, uh, especially if you can you know keep swapping the cards out on a shoot. Uh, tell us about using. Are you using the digital SLR to shoot video also? I am. Yes. Um, um, for the last two years, I've been shooting with a red camera. Uh, the red one, sure. and um, let's see, about, I guess about a year ago, I picked up the 5D Mark II. Um, I've since sold the red, uh, waiting for the next uh, 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 red camera to come out, the, the Epic. I've, um, heard so right they, I've heard they have a Mysterium X now upgrade for the, uh, for the old, older red. Uh, did you have any dealings with that? Uh, no, I didn't do the upgrade. I sold the camera before, before upgrading it. Um, the person I sold it to got it upgraded, though. The, the Mysterium X sensor is um, it's a, a, a really great improvement, uh, uh, a lot lower noise, which means you can run higher ISOs on the camera. So 
yeah, definitely, definitely a good sensor. And that sensor is going to be in the new Epic camera that comes out. So I'm sort of living in, in between this uh, owning the red one and hopefully someday owning the Epic. And in the meantime, I'm shooting all my projects on a Canon Mark II, 5D Mark II. And, um, you know, honestly, for, for uh, 95% of my clients, it works just fine. You know, I've, I've, I'm shooting broadcast TV spots with it. Uh, I'm shooting web video with it. Um, people just really can't tell the difference, especially when, you, when you're watching something on web. Um, even I can't tell the difference sometimes. It's like I've got, a, I've got a friend back east, and he shoots on red sometimes and 5D other times. He'll send me, he'll send me uh, projects that he's working on, and, and it's this sort of game that we, we have where I'm trying to guess what camera he shot it on. So, uh, well, yeah, the, you know, the 5G shoot, is a powerful tool. Well, I, I took a 70 to uh, Sundance with me this year, and uh, we've been shooting on the, uh, on the, uh, the EOS uh, uh, T2i. We have two of them. Uh -huh. and, uh, and we've compared the 7D and the, uh, and the T2, and, and I don't know from a video standpoint if there's really a whole lot of difference in what type of video we're getting out. And if you compare the 5D and the 7D, obviously those cameras, they're starting to creep into the firmware and make the changes that need to be made. And then, of course, you can run, mm -hmm. what is it, Magic Lantern on top of the firmware. Are you doing that? Well, since, since Canon released their uh, 24P up, uh, firmware upgrade, I haven't been running Magic Lantern. I, I did in the past. Um, you know, to get the uh, manual control of audio. That's right, that's right, because the 5D didn't have 24P when it was released, did it? It didn't, it did not have 24P and it did not have manual audio control. I mean, let's be honest, it's, it's not really a true video camera, you know, it lacks uh, almost all the features of, of like a real video camera, even a prosumer camera, you know, like uh, professional audio inputs, um, uh, you know, uh, meters, zebras, uh, audio meters, all that kind of stuff. It's it's lacking a lot of those things. Are you doing any filmmaking uh, with with this, or uh, what did you shoot your uh, iPad movie on? Uh, that was the Mark II. That was the five D Mark II. You shot that in twenty four, or how did you shoot? What frame rate? Yeah, did we you shoot? we shot it in twenty four P, and uh, you know, uh, I didn't I didn't use any lighting at all. I just you know bumped the ISO. I mean, it it wasn't a, a commercial project, so I thought, well, I'll just. It looks you know clean. do this as quickly as I can. Yeah, well, what I, would your it does range look be on ISO? Was it? Uh, did you go higher than eight hundred when you were doing that? Uh, yeah, for for I believe for the shot in the bedroom where it pans from my feet up to the ceiling, I believe that was like twelve hundred ISO or maybe higher. It looked nice. Um, it looked clean. I'll have to watch it again. Yeah, I mean, when you when you uh, compress it for web, you know, you down res it for web. A, a lot of that uh, grain, you know, it shrinks down as well and gets kind of covered up by web compression. So, you know, the the real question is, and 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 the Mark II seems to sort of um, ride this line well. Is uh, you know how how much is good enough? You know. Um, Certainly, if you're shooting uh, a film that's got theater distribution, that's going to be shown in you know on a 1080p Blu-ray player, you know, uh, shoot it with a red camera, definitely, or or another true uh, 1080p uh, video camera. But if you're shooting stuff, you know, my my commercial work gets uh, down res to standard def broadcast. Um, by the time it's down res, it's like it could have been shot on a on an iPhone probably. Tell us what what are you doing now? Is there something you're excited about that you can tell us about? Uh, no, I'm full of secrets. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm working on a music video right now uh, we're just in the preliminary planning stages and I'm really excited about it. Um, I've had a video, the last video I did ended up on MTV. Um, so um, I'm excited that <laughs> this video uh, I'm actually putting some like concept to and planning into. So this this was this would be my second music video. Um, the only the only challenge right now is that um, the band doesn't yet know <laughs> that I want to make a music video for them. So uh, I, I'm putting all Lucky the pieces them. together. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm putting all the pieces together, and then I'm going to approach the band and say, "Here's the concept. This is going to be awesome." 
you know, it's, it's not going to cost you any money. Just, I just need your, uh, you know, participation because it would be hard to make the video without the band. What was, um, the, what was the video that it ended up on MTV? See, the band was The Myriad. And um, I had a couple hours with the band before a concert. And uh, we shot, um, we overcranked and undercranked. Um, you so did that with the, must have been with the Red. That was with the Red, yeah. So we... So we had the band perform really, really slow. We slowed the music down, shot at like, uh, I think it was 12 frames per second, maybe. No, it was eight frames per second. Wow. Slowed the music down. So the band is like, you know, the drummer's playing really slow, trying to keep, you know, keep time with this like dragged out song. Uh, and then when we sped the music back up to normal speed and sped uh, the visuals up, it has this sort of like weird, um, uh, almost like almost stop motion, sort of Keystone Cop style, uh, sped up, weird cadence to the motion. So we, um, it was basically all camera tricks. We only had a couple hours with the band, uh, but it turned out pretty good, and, and it, it aired on MTV for for a while. So very cool. Sounds like you're really into music. Uh, I guess sort of uh, closing here. Is there some music that we should be listening to right now that's in your iPod that uh, you'd suggest? I'm putting mm. you on the spot. Yeah, you know, I don't. I love music. I'm, I'm, I'm a musician. Um, I, you know, before I got into film, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna be in a rock band and you know, change the world. Um, but in, right, it seems like lately, I, I don't really have any time to listen to new music. Um, but I've been getting into a lot, uh, a lot more. Uh, uh, I don't know what to call it, like click hop or or, or glitch hop. Um, so I've been listening to Moom a lot lately. M U M. They're an Icelandic band. Um, interesting, cool stuff. Uh, what else? Yeah, Arcade Fire. Their new album just came out. Oh, yeah, that, that, I that, haven't that, heard that yet. They're great. I've listened through once. It sounds sounds pretty good. Um, yeah, I like music. Well, that's great. And uh, thank you so much for joining us.